Kiss and Life workshops happening every Saturday on different skills you'll need to start conducting your own research or as a part of our research team. Um, if you guys don't know, my name is Sophia. I'm the Director of Research here at Lives for Literacy. And today I'm joined with Edith, our presenter, who will be leading this workshop on interpreting research statistics and terminology. So I'm just gonna grab. Okay, so a little bit about Edith. Um, she's an economist from the Universidad Nacional del Centro del Peru. She is an intern at the Pontificia Universidad Católica del Peru with experience in statistical data processing. Um, she has worked at the Central Reserve Bank of Peru and supported research related to climate change and the impact of the El Nino phenomenon of the basic family basket. Um, she has also had experience in environmental regulation and developmental projects and is currently part of the non-governmental organization as a specialist in value chains and Instituto Perucano as a specialist in finance. All right. So uh, after the session, everyone who is here and has attended will receive an optional certification test, which has questions on the topics covered in this workshop. The form is only eight questions, and if you pass, we'll send you a certificate. So we highly encourage everyone to do it. And also just a disclaimer that this meeting will be recorded. So please make sure your microphones and cameras are off if you would not like to be in the recording. And finally, um, before we begin, we would like to take this time to acknowledge the traditional lands in which we operate, which are the unceded territory of the Mohawk, a place that has long served as a site of meeting and exchange amongst nations. And for me, I'd like to acknowledge that I'm on the traditional and unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil peoples. All right, so without further ado, I'd like to pass it off to Edith. Go ahead whenever you're ready. Actually, I'll make you, let me see if I can make you co-host, Edith. Um, okay, thanks. Um, you can you can um, allow to screen. Please share my screen. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Is Mary able to make her co-host? Because I don't think I'm able to. One second. Yeah, you're co-host. You should be able to share your screen now. Okay, thanks. Okay, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, today, um, and we speak about an interpretation of research statistic and journal. Uh, I have a, a little experience with statistics, so I want to I want to share with us uh, with them and my experience. Maybe uh, we can we can fi find uh, some examples in in this work workshop, but in in many research, uh, you can find more, uh, more, more kinds of graphs and uh, and and tables. So I I want to explain my knowledge. Uh, so I I am happy to to be here. Uh, good. Uh, the statistic is a mathematical discipline to help to organize, summarize, analyze, analyze, and interpret information to take decisions. It's very important the statistics in in our in, in our research because uh, it it allow to uh, explain our ideas in numeric in numeric ways. So uh, it's very important to interpret these these results to to take decision how how say this there 
Uh, and many, uh, many people uh, ask about uh, how to read different types of graphs and data tables commonly found in research articles. Uh, when we saw, when we see uh, research articles, we we can find different types of graphs. There are many, and but there are a common, uh, most common in research. So today uh, we can speak about that. Uh, to interpret and and to to speak about this this theme, we need to interpret to identify trends and data vari variability such that we obtain conclusion or information and allow us to make decisions. For that, we we need to remember basic statistic elements. Uh, for example, uh, the basic elements is population and samples. What is population? Uh, the population is a set of elements with common char characteristics and it can, it can be finite or infinite. And finite is when we know uh, the, the group uh, and we, we know how, how many observations there are in this group. And in the case of in an infinite case is when we, uh, we know the, the, uh, that there are a, a group, but we don't, we, we don't, we doesn't know uh, the finish of this group. Uh, what is the sample? The sample is a set of suitable select elements. Uh, so the sample must be representative. Uh, there are many simple sampling methods and it depends uh, that 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 the kind of variables and the and and the kind of our objectives uh, the selection depend of kinds of population um, we can find the the methods these methods in um, a statistic book for example there are many there are many um, many many methods to to select uh, one uh, also we can remember what is parameters and what is statistics we have a uh, three three kinds of statistics statistics measure of central tendency measure of position measure of dispersion uh, the measure of central tendency um, are the medium, the mean, and the mode. And the mode. Uh, where is the medium? The medium is the value uh, central occupies uh, the, the value that occupies the central space in a set of ordered data. Uh, the mean is the uh, represent the average of the set data. Mm, the mode is the value more frequently. So if when we need to interpret our research and graphs and table data, uh, we need to remember this measure of central tendency. The measure of position, uh, for example, the deciles, quartiles, and percentiles, uh, it depends on uh, how many parts uh, is divided the group of data. Uh, the deciles is a uh, value that divide the distribution and ten equals part. The quartiles is is referred to a part in four equal parts, and the percentiles is a one hundred equal equal parts. And the measure of dispersion, for example, the the standard the deviation. A, it's about, it represents the distribution um, of the dates around the mean. The, the variance is a, a, is a measure that expresses the difference between over date with the mean. Um, 
that coefficient variation is a, uh, it determines how homogeneous is the infor information. Uh, to interpret uh, graphics and tables, we need to know what kind of variables will be represented in a research. Uh, we can find two kinds of variables, the qualitatives and quantitatives. And the, represent, and the representation uh, is related um, to of the kind of the variables. Uh, in, in the case that the qualitative variables, uh, it represents uh, attributes of an element and don't allow a numeric representation. Uh, it's very common if find these qualitative variables in science uh, and social science. For example, economic, uh, sociology, anthropology, but we can find uh, also we can find in logical, for example, logic science, for example, in, in Mathematica, when the research is related to, to um, logic and many, many, many types of research. Uh, the example of variables and uh, the qualitative variables is gender, socioeconomic, uh, profession, social characteristics that uh, these, uh, these variables uh, uh, give uh, characteristics, but uh, one characteristic is what one char characteristic isn't, uh, it isn't better than others. Uh, it, it would be a uh, uh, character, characteristic uh, about the qualitative variables. When we see quantitative variables, uh, we can say that it allows to represent the futures to measure and scale. And for example, we can uh, a, a variable, a quantitative variable is a salary, temperature, pressure, atmospheric, and there are many common uh, variables in in every science. And and we can and we can compare and we can uh, to we can to 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 express uh, the quantitative variables in, in a numeric way. Uh, what kind of graphics we can find in, in research? Uh, here we will we going to uh, I we I going to. Uh, show uh, the most common graphic in, in research. Uh, the first, the first graphic, uh, for example, is the histograms. What is the the histograms? Is the curve form for rectangles dis distributed on a, a Cartesian plane? Uh, for example, in this case, it represents in a Cartesian plane. Uh, in the Abscis and axis represent the intervals, and in the ordinate axis represent the independent variables. So it's it is like a common rule in the mathematics. In general, we can say that um, the uh, in the abscis and axis we represent the independent variables. And in the uh, ordinate axis, we can find the dependent variables. In this example, uh, the objectives that this histogram is represent uh, how is the uh, how is the the, the frequency about uh, the the emissions of gigatons the CO two, and we have the the range an index and it is playing uh, zero is uh, in 90s and two is a uh, is a estimate and uh, to two 2015 and and here we have a resume of statistics uh, and represent the number of observation, the mean, 
uh, the medium and the, the standard deviation. And it represents what is the, the behavior uh, uh, throughout time uh, and how frequency is that uh, when, when we have intervention, when we, in, when we have known classified and when we don't, don't have intervention. Um, the next example is the frequency polygon. What is the effect for the frequency polygon? It's a set of lines in the Cartesian plan that represents the behavior of variables in the population. It applies to continuum uh, quantitative variables. We can represent the quantitative variables in this kind of, of graphic because uh, there are, is, is a, repre a numeric representation so we can two two kinds of frequency polygon, uh, the frequency, the simple uh, frequency, and the cumulative uh, frequency. Uh, in the in the frequency, we we can we can see different behavior. Maybe it increase uh, uh, for a long time, and is very uh, and after that would be uh, would be uh, normal and after that it, it would be change change their uh, change their their behavior and the cumulative frequency is different because um, frequently it has a growing a growing tendency because uh, the, the behavior is accumulative uh, through that through the time, uh, the class mark uh, is increase increase when the when the past time. The next example is the bar chart. The bar chart is is an uh, example uh, a very common uh, when we saw uh, when we see in research. There are two two uh, kinds to represent. Uh, maybe uh, in in the first part we can we can see how uh, represent in absolute values, uh, and the second part uh, we can see how uh, represent in percentage values. Uh, in this case, uh, the chart, the objective uh, chart, is represent the number of population on technology through time. Uh, it represents, for example, in uh, 90s, uh, there, there was uh, only one publication on technology, uh, but it was increased uh, through time. Uh, so in 2015, uh, we have, we, we, can, we can find uh, 702 uh, publication on technology. So uh, every every color represent uh, how many uh, publication on technology uh, there are uh, in in every year, uh, and it represent how is the uh, evolution uh, through time. And the next part of the bar chart uh, is the the share of publication on technology. Uh, how uh, how many uh, publications uh, shared in in every uh, scenarios? It's this uh, this publication uh, is based in scenarios on climate change. Where is that the the mainly um, the mainly uh, terms of the publication of technology uh, related to the scenarios to EPCC. Uh, so, for example, in the scenario uh, R1, we have that that's 100% was afforestation and reforestation, uh, but it's different to the R6 scenarios because uh, in in this in these scenarios uh, there are more uh, there are more uh, kinds of 
publication, share, uh, share of publication on technology. We can find, uh, for example, uh, soil carbon sequest sequestration, uh, ocean fertilization, um, different to, to the one uh, scenarios. Uh, also, we can, we can find circular diagrams. The circular diagram uh, we use when, when we want to represent uh, what is the, the impact or what is the, the part of different variables for respect to that. Um, for example, uh, the objective in this case is represent the greenhouse gas, gas emissions by EPCC source sector in Europe in two, 2018. Uh, for example, um, the full combust combustion represent the, the 76 uh, percent uh, from the from the 100 percent, and the the other uh, source sector, uh, for example, the transportation uh, represents that 20 24 percent. Uh, from the 100 percent so the the objective in this case is represent uh, how much is the uh, is the part or how represent how much uh, represent this variable about the total um, and uh, how representative uh, is is every variable in this case we can we can uh, see two combination uh, in this case, use uh, two cases: uh, the bar chart uh, in the in the right, and the the circular diagram in in the left. Uh, maybe uh, in this uh, this uh, use is because the the others represent uh, is a is a big part to uh, to refer the the other part. So it's very important to explain what is, for what is a, a, is is other. So in this in this case, represent that the variable others is conformed by industrial process and products, agriculture and waste management. So it's a represent respect that total. Um, the next, we, we can find um, the radial diagram. What is the, the radial gram, diagram? Uh, the radial diagram is a, represent, is a representation when we have uh, many variables and how it's related uh, respect to, respect to, to an index. In this case, the, the radi this radial gram uh, want to represent what is the risk of impact respect the emission scenarios uh, in different in variables in in the in the sea. Uh, we have uh, the coastal and marine organisms and ecosystem and services. Uh, it's the uh, the risk of impact. It's valued. Um, since zero uh, uh, the 10 uh, risks, for example. Uh, the yellow color represent uh, are indicted and detectable. And when we, uh, when it um, become uh, in red, it's very hard. The, the, the impact is very high. Uh, so we can say that in this graph, uh, if, for example, if when in, in this percent day, uh, in, in these scenarios, uh, we can say that that effect in, in, in the present day is, for example, is there are most more risk of impact in the warm water corals. Different, for example, to, to open ocean carbon uptake. Uh, because uh, it it doesn't have doesn't have um, undetectable uh, a height a height uh, risk of impact uh, the impact is undetectable 
because uh, the, the center of the circle uh, represent that there aren't risk. And in the, the same interpretation is similar to the other scenarios. Uh, in this part, we can, we can see uh, the emissions scenarios and we can interpret uh, how is the impact, how is the, the risk of impact uh, in every variable with the, uh, in every uh, emission scenario. In frequently, uh, we can find uh, frequent uh, graphics. For example, uh, many times the central banks around the world use a uh, use uh, the forecast to, uh, for example, to inflation projection. Uh, and this graphic, for example, represent how would, uh, uh, how uh, will be the behavior of the, of the inflation through time. Uh, the, the red line represent uh, how is the, the, the behavior uh, through time the, since uh, 2010 uh, and 2018. So the, the difference is that uh, it's uh, the, the behavior of this variable in the red line uh, are dates, are dates, but uh, since this part, is a uh, is a forecast, so there are uh, there are error uh, through time, and and it represents uh, how would be uh, how would be in the the random uh, how random uh, would be the the projection the inflation projection. So in this case, in, in this case, uh, the percent of inflation is very normal, but uh, when in the in the projection, there have uh, it has uh, error and it would be very random. So uh, these colors represent how random is is the, the projection uh, through time. Um, uh, a good example about uh, in the combination how how the uh, how it represents the the graphic in, in many research is it, 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 it. Uh, we can find very uh, a lot of uh, kinds of graphics and we can we can see for example uh, the first case. In the first case, it's a, it's a graphic that represents the dynamic response of system. Of system. There are, are forcing, uh, um, there are response. How is the response uh, from, uh, from the forcing? Uh, this is the forcing and the scenarios or response uh, is the, the green uh, line, the blue scale line, and the, and the black line. And every line represent um, an, an scenario. And yes, represent, for example, uh, un, a response and a group respond non-linear. Um, in this case, for example, in blue sky represent the, the delayed response and in this case, the, the black lines represent uh, the, 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 that there are in response uh, to the forcing. And the next case, we can say the variability times of emergency and extreme. Uh, it is a representation uh, from the two cases and two scenarios too. Uh, but the difference is, is that uh, the graph represents the, the distribution. And in this part, we can, we can see the distribution and the probability, probability uh, distribution. 
and the red line represent uh, how is the, the median respect the, the behavior the, uh, of the climate variable and what would be the variability in build-up of reference period. So um, in this case, they consider the reference period, uh, the time of emergency, and what uh, would be the, the behavior of the climate variable uh, through time. In this case, we can, we can see the typing points uh, the typing points uh, represent uh, what is the uh, what is the number, what is the the moment uh, in the the variable change the, their behavior. Uh, for example, uh, the the variable uh, would be growing, um, but in, in this moment when when there are typing points, uh, it changes their uh, her behavior. And it would be, for example, crescent. And uh, for example, uh, after that, uh, would be um, very normal and or maybe increase it. And the, this graphic represents how is the, the typing point uh, with, the, with anthrop anthropogenic change. Uh, how is the, the, the behavior of the typing points? The next uh, graphic, the next example is about the detection and attribution. It's similar to the, to the B example, in, in this case, the, variabil the variability time of emergency and extremes. It, it's similar, it represents two scenarios with the, with the behavior of climate, climate variable uh, through time. A, in the example uh, E, we can we can see the cascading effects. Uh, for what the, what is playing this this graph? It, it is it is playing the the relation the relation between uh, between them. Uh, for example, where is the the effect the the forcing uh, in the for example it represents that that the, the forcing have uh, has impact on physical biogeochemical changes uh, also in biological ecological change and human system change and there are uh, a relation between them uh, there are the relation and 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 all them the, the last example is a event attribution. It represent the represent the probability uh, density and represent how is the uh, the probability and how how is distribution and and the event attribution the normal the normalized likelihood and the clim climate variable. Um, maybe we can find uh, more, uh, more example or more kind of, of graphics, but there was the, the more common that we can find in our research. Um, the next is about the, what kind of tables we can find in research. Uh, we can find, for example, con contingency tables. Uh, the contingency tables uh, represent how is the uh, represent a resume of very index of a lot of index. For example, uh, we have the table one that resume the summary statistics. We have the variables uh, and what is the uh, what is the index respect to other variables and it it this table represents, for example, uh, what is the, the index about the restaurant characteristics, uh, what is the, the mean, the median, the minimum, the maximum, a standard deviation, and the number. Uh, the number uh, with how I, how I told is 
the sample. The representation in, in the tables depends the kind of data. We can, we can find three kinds of data. Uh, we, can, we can find, for example, the, space, the spatial uh, panel data models that represent uh, many, many observations through time. Uh, the, the time, uh, for example, would be the one year, the second year, the third day, the third year, sorry. And, but this, uh, this behavior, uh, it is, is about the, the many, the many observation and the many times. The second kind of data uh, is the cross, the cross-sectional data models. The cross-sectional represent how is the behavior of, of many variables of, um, or, the, or the many uh, observation in one time. For example, it would be in, in this year uh, or in, in exactly one year that you can choose. Uh, and it represent how, how, is the, how is the behavior in only one year. The time series data models represent uh, to, uh, is different to the cross-sectional because uh, it represents how, how is the behavior uh, of the only variables through time. For example, uh, we have only variable and we analyze uh, the behavior this year, the next year, and every year in the future. And it, it's a, it is an example, the time series data model. Uh, this kind of data is, is very important to, to recognize, recognize because uh, it, uh, it, uh, it's conditional to select or choose kind of table or kind of data, and it's related to uh, is related uh, to the to the kind of research too. How how to create your own graph and table for the kind of data collected from your your research? Um, to create um, the graph and table. Uh, is related um, to the type of data and what is what is our objectives in our research but the the graphics must have chart code or number the little and the little uh, must uh, have uh, must have uh, answer must uh, answer uh, the, the questions where, what, how, when, uh, when, when is the, uh, the representation of the variables, and um, we have uh, the unit of measures of the little. The little uh, must have these items to to uh, put in context. Uh, to the lectures. Uh, the graphics uh, must have a body. The body uh, represents or must have a scale and axis of value. Uh, the graphics uh, has a figure two. Um, the scale or axis of value, the legend that the, when we, we explain what what meaning uh, is every uh, every variable in in our in our graph or in our table? The future, uh, the not um, when we want to explain uh, some um, some questions, some uh, some concept uh, or a specific a specific uh, a specific something. 
um, there are criteria to select a graphic, but it is very, it is very important to select a correct graphic. But how to select a graphic? Uh, it it ha it would be uh, it would have um, very a lot of characteristics. But the main the main characteristics characteristics would be for um, and it would be the the mainly characteristics uh, first. The, the graphic must be the facilitate uh, to compare and identify behavior in the data. It's, it's very important that the, the graphic uh, permit allow to, in, to compare and identify behavior in the data. Uh, it, it should be, uh, be facilitated to compare. Uh, it's a uh, it's an important characteristic. The second is a, a clear and precise language must be used in each and every statement. Maybe the, the many times we can confuse about the what is the, the main idea that we can that we want to represent in, in our graphic, but uh, while the while, while the idea uh, be clear and precise is, is, is better. So a graphic uh, would be, uh, must be clear and precise. Uh, the, next, uh, the next characteristic is, is that the graphic graphs should be avoided uh, where the diversity of categories, indicators, and variables make it difficult to read it. Uh, there are, um, there are a uh, avoid, uh, we, can, we can avoid uh, the diversity indicators. Many indicators maybe uh, is very confused when the lector read our research. The last is the, uh, the graphic in, in the use of symbolages, uh, the use of the densities of a single color should be prioritized over the use of different colors in line symbology. The use of line times should be prioritized on on the color ones. Maybe we can is very uh, is very uh, is very common. That, that we can use uh, many colors, but uh, while we can, while we use um, little colors, we can explain, uh, we can explain our ideas um, the better ways. If we can, if we use uh, the, this, um this uh these kinds of these recommendations uh, we 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 would have uh, a good graph the best ways to represent different kinds of data what criteria to select a graph a graphic there are uh, there are many criteria but um this maybe this is the the main uh, the the mainly uh, criteria, for example, the one the the column or vertical charts are also appropriate to represent informa information through over time. When we want to to represent uh, what is the behavior uh, of the variable through time, over time. Um, the second, for example, uh, when the horizontal bar graph have that advantage over vertical bar graph of the behavior levels and easier to read if they have long times. Uh, what use when we have long time long names? Uh, in this recommendation is very important to because uh, when you when you when we use it 
uh, we we would have uh, a good um, a good data a, a good graphic. Um, also, overlapping bar charts allow you to study multiple multiple data series independent and compare them. And finally, the rectangular graphics uh, allow to analyze the percentage participation of the elements with respect to a total. Uh, and we, we saw one example uh, about the rectangular graphs. Uh, in this case, uh, it is a rectangular graph. Uh, how, I, how I told it's a absolute values and percentage values. And it's very important when, when we have, uh, when we want to represent what is the, the behavior about the total, or we can represent the, the behavior respect to the, to the time or, or, com or, or, or compare with, with, with years on, um, or, uh, or other variables. Uh, what is the principles to build a graph? Uh, the principles to build a graph is the Cartesian axis. Uh, many times, uh, how we we saw uh, is very very common. Uh, saw the Cartesian axis to represent the the behavior of the variables. Uh, uh, for example, the the Cartesian axis is used in in histograms and bar charts and another uh, another graphics uh, the next principle is the, the order uh, the order is very important because if we don't have order order uh, maybe the, the lector uh, would be confused and the the objectives our stage the it it isn't clear. Uh, the next principle is uh, homogeneity. It, it's related to, to the, our data. Our data uh, must, must be homogeneity. Um, the last principle is uh, self-sufficient. Um, a graphic uh, have, uh, must have to um, to uh, to represent uh, to represent our idea, what is the objectives that uh, in in this case, uh, what is the objectives that we want to represent through the graphic, and so the the graphic uh, would be self sufficient to represent our idea. Uh, the common research vocabulary and terminology, what they mean and when to use them. Uh, the multiple, the multivariate analysis is referred to the, when, when we have uh, two or more variables and how is um, that we want to, to study. Uh, there are many variables, uh, how objectives. Uh, the univariate anal analyze uh, it referred to the when when we have only 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 a variable uh, in our study and that the content analyze what is the, the content in our analyze uh, is very important when we uh, def, when we uh, select uh, our research or the item in in our research the causality the uh, causality is how uh, what is the effect uh, from the from the independent variable to the depend depend variable. What is the effect? Uh, the causality. There are many times we can find uh, causality res research, so it's very important um, to understand uh, what is the causality the correlation. 
Um, the correlation uh, is the variation of the variables and how it's, it is re related with other. Um, how, um, how is that the, the change of the behavior uh, respect to other variables? Um, maybe uh, the last or the um, uh, one import uh, terminology is the, the limitation of the research problem. Uh, so uh, it's very important to, to choose what is and delimit what is the, what is the uh, research problem. Uh, while more uh, precise uh, is a problem, is, is very, is better. Um, our idea uh, and our objectives uh, is is more uh, easier to and is more easier to identify uh, the conclusions uh, to interpret graphics and tables we use the statistics term uh, for example uh, population sample uh, parameters and statistics uh, and statistics there are three summar summar summary measures uh, measures of central tendency, measure of positions, um, measure of dispersion. Uh, the next, the most common kind of graphic are histograms, frequency polygon, bar charge, um, diagram, and, and others. The column or vertical charts are also appropriate for representing information throughout the time. The common terminology in, in the research are multivariate analysis, analyze, uh, univariate analyze, uh, causality, correlation, and depletion of the research problem. Uh, it's all, uh, and thanks everyone. All right, thank you, Edith, for the amazing presentation. It was extremely informative. Um, another thank you to everyone who attended, and we really hope you learned something from the workshop today. Um, again, we'll be emailing all attendees shortly with the certification test and other follow-up information. Um, remember that the test is optional, but we encourage you to try it because it won't take very long. And if you pass, we'll email you a certificate with the name that you put on the form. And this form will close um, early on Monday, April 19th. And lastly, don't forget to register for our next workshop happening next Saturday on how to write about your research. Registration links will be included in the email and we'll be sending you all of that information afterwards. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just so, have a question. Um, one of the one of the other participants have a question. So he she asked the question as follows: How is a bar chart different from a histogram? So if Edith could answer that question, please. How is a bar chart different from a histogram? Maybe you refer to the difference between histogram and bar chart. Um, like she would like to know what is the difference. What is the difference between a, between what? A bar chart and a histogram. Oh, okay. Um, the histogram represents uh, represent where is the the frequency accumulative, uh, but the the bar chart represent how is the uh, how is that the uh, how is the behavior but um, in this it is an important uh, how is the um, how is the frequency for example and in the histogram represent uh, the every 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 rectangle in in the in in the in the graphic, it depends of the, the frequency, but in the but in the bar chart, uh, there are um, a common uh, a common index or are the, the the common uh, measure for represent the behavior. 
Perfect, thank you. And then last but not least, Yabad, you wanna make an announcement? Oh yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I'm sharing in the chat box the link for our YouTube channel. So please do well to subscribe to our channel. That's where we will share different workshops that we have, that we have had also it's there and also the coming ones. So please do well to subscribe. Thank you very much, Miss President. You're welcome. And then also last but not least, um, we at Life Literacy are opening positions for executives. If you'd like to join the team, please send us a message on Instagram or send us an email. If you guys um, want to know what email it is, this. Let me type it in the chat box. And last but not least, we'll just take a picture for remembrance. And yes. And I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation. And thanks to our wonderful Sophia, director of research, for planning this, and Edith for um, for leading this. And okay, here's the email. If you'd like to apply for a position or interested in, you know, being part of the executive team, we are very welcoming. You can ask. Yabaha and Sophia, we don't bite. So we are very welcoming. And okay, last but not least, I'll take a picture. And so if I could see your beautiful faces, that'll be very appreciated. Thank you. Okay, one, two, six. Okay, I don't kind of Wait, it's safe. like people are turning okay. on the camera. So wait, you can stop the recording and- Okay, let me, let me record, hang on. Okay, um, stop recording. Uh, stop.